Hi guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a UI popover controller with the iPad, with your iPad applications. So we create an Xcode project, open up a single view application, product name, I'm going to call it popover tutorial. I'm not going to use a storyboard, and I'm going to use automatic reference counting. Then I'm going to create my project on the desktop. Alright, so this tutorial is going to be pretty simple. Or we're just going to have a button and a label. And go to your um, iPad view controller. Because in the beginning we selected universal, it, so it creates an iPhone version and an iPad for us. So in this tutorial we're just going to focus on the iPad. So drag on a button and, and drag on a label. And if all right. And sorry, I haven't done a tutorial for a while. I've just been busy with the with the applications, and this is a part of the code that I used in my application that was just um that was just approved by Apple. So um, yeah, if you want to check out the app, it's Idea Diary, and it's in the Apple App Store now for the iPhone and iPad and iPod Touch. So this is part of the code that I'm that I'm using, but I've modified it um, in order to fit the time for this tutorial. So we just have a button and a label. And in our assistant editor, just control click and drag the button. Actually, let me change the background for a second. Change the background to neon green. All right. And then control click and drag the button onto our view controller dot h. And I'm just going to call this my button um, outlet. And the label, I'm also going to control click and drag it. And I'm just going to call this my label. And like one more time, control click and drag the button on. But this time, the connection type, change it to action name is going to be my button press type ID event touch up inside argument sender. And then that's all we need for the assist for the header file. Oh, a couple more things. Um, add this on UI popover controller delegate, UI picker view data source, and UI picker view delegate. Because in this tutorial, when you click on the button, what I want to happen is a popover. I'm gonna pop over the button, and it's gonna pop over the the um, uh, pick review. All right, so that's all we need for the assistant editor. Now let's go to our view controller implementation file and start um, start that. So we're going to have some instance variables in here. First, I'm going to have a UI popover controller and it's going to, I'm going to call it popover controller. And I'm going to have a UI picker view. This one I'm going to call it category picker. And then I'm going to have a UI toolbar. And I'm going to call this picker toolbar. And the last instance variable that I'm going to have is an NS mutable array. I'm going to call this array of categories. All right. And in our view did load. Do array of categories equals ns mutable array alloc init with objects. So here we're define we're um we're declaring the objects that's gonna be inside this um this array of categories. So it's gonna be the objects that'll pop up in our um in our pick review. So I'm gonna keep it pretty simple and then just do one well not tall two three, four, all right, one more, five, okay, one more, six, wow, I messed up on all of those anyways, <laughs> okay, and uh, what else, so after that, we're just gonna start in the my button press, so this is what we have to do. So do category picker equals UI picker view alloc. This do init and then do picker toolbar equals UI toolbar alloc. 
in it, and then from there, the pop the popover controller is mainly designed for the iPad. So I'm just gonna show you the iPad version. So here I do we do a check. If UI user interface idiom equals UI user interface idiom pad, so that just checks if it's an iPad. Then we then we um then we start doing the popover um, controller. So UI view controller. UI view controller. I'm gonna call this popover content equals UI view controller. Alec in it so this is gonna be the view controller that's gonna go inside our popover controller and then do UI view and I call this popover view and this popover view will be the view that goes inside of the popover content so popover view goes inside the popover content and popover content goes inside the popover controller which is gonna be presented to you on the screen so here's a UI view UI view, Alec, init with frame, and the frame I'm just gonna do CG rect make, zero, zero, and then do uh, category picker frame, um, dot size, dot width, because the width of the picker is already defined by the Apple API, so we can just do that. And the height will be, um, the height also is already already defined. So category picker the frame dot size dot height. But in addition to that, I want to tag the toolbar on top of this picker. So I'm just gonna add 44 because 44 is normally the height of a UI toolbar. Okay. And then from there, um, category picker equals UI picker view Alec init with frame and then cg rect make cg rect make is uh, let's see the size of the picker i want it to be a pop over view frame dot origin dot x and uh, for the height of the y would be pop over view frame dot origin dot y but instead of dot y I mean in addition to that we have to add 44 because we want the picker to be 44 um, 44 spaces below the below the toolbar because we want the toolbar to be on the top and then so now for the width the width, I'm just gonna say zero, the height will be zero. Because these doesn't really matter because a category picker is a is a picker and you 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 can't change the size of the picker. So they can be any numbers you want. The pickers will still be the same size. And then um do a picker toolbar equals UI toolbar, Alec, init with the frame, and the frame will be CG rect make. It's gonna be popover view frame dot origin dot x. And this one will be popover view the height. I mean the origin of the y popover view frame dot origin dot y. And the width will be the same as the category picker. So and also the same as the popover view. So I can say popover view frame. Um, pop over view frame dot size dot width and for the height of the picker toolbar uh, it's going to be 44 and then we have to set the delegate and data source so do category picker set data source self category picker set delegate self and then category picker set set show selection indicator so that's the little highlighted bar that shows across the picker. Set that to yes so you know what you're selecting. And then now we take care of the picker toolbar. So do picker toolbar, set bar style, UI bar style black. And then we're going to have three different um, UI bar button items to go on top of the, of the picker toolbar. 
So you first thing is gonna be a UI bar button item. I'm gonna call it flex space equals UI bar button item alloc init with bar button system item and it's gonna be a UI bar button system item flexible space target nil action nil. Now these are nil because it's just an empty space, it doesn't do anything, so you don't need a target or any kind of action. The next button, I'm going to call this the done, done button equals UI bar button item alloc in, in it with title. And I'm just going to call this done style UI bar button item style border target self action is the method that's going to be called when the done button is pressed. So at selector, let's say done press. All right. And last one is going to be called cancel button equals UI bar button item alloc in it with title cancel style UI bar button item style border target self action is the action is the method that's going to be called so let's call it cancel press and from there we have to set the items of the picker toolbar so picker toolbar set items and it takes an NS array so let's do NS array array with objects and then well not objects oh, array with objects because you have multiple objects so we're going to add these three things the flexible space the done button and the cancel button onto our onto our picker toolbar so first do flex space done button and cancel button and from there um we can start adding the things to our picker to our pop overview. So pop overview, we're gonna add sub view. So first we're gonna add the category picker, which is the picker view, and then we're gonna add uh, the toolbar. Add sub view um, picker toolbar, and then we're gonna say pop over content. Now we're going to add the view to our popover content, which is our view controller. Set view to be our popover view. All right, so here we've added the picker and the toolbar to our popover view, which is our view. And now we've set the, this view right here into our popover content. Now the last thing we have to do is um, set that to go into the to go into the popover controller to be presented on the screen. So the popover controller equals um, UI popover controller poop over popover. UI popover controller alloc um, init with contents of view controller and that argument is going to be a popover content. And then from there you do pop over pop over controller dot pop over content size equals CG size make and then do category picker frame dot size dot width and the height is gonna be pop over view frame dot size dot height and then cause the pop overview we do this because it's our the pop overview is already the picker plus the 44 because if we did, if we just say category picker frame dot size dot width then we have to again say plus 44 on here for the height so it's equivalent so I just do it this way and do pop over controller present pop over from rect you can present it from the pop over from two different um, from two different places from a bar button item that already exists like let's say you have a navigation bar with some buttons you can present it from there or you can present it from rect and the, this rect is just is the one that I'm going to use it's going to be the 
rect is going to be the um, the rectangle of my of my button. So from rect, I'm going to do cg rect make. No, no, sorry, not cg rect make. The button already has a frame. So you can do self my button outlet dot frame because the frame is the cg cg rect of the button. So you can just do that in view. So we're going to present it on our screen. So self view and permit permitted arrow direction. I'm going to do UI popover direction any animated. OK, yes. And um, that's it for the button press. Now we have to now we have to do the delegate and data source of the pick reviews. So first, I'm just going to do the number of components in the picker view. And number of components only going to be one because there's only like one um, one column. Yeah, one column. So that's call component in the picker view. And then we do picker view, number of rows in component. So number of row in component is however many objects was in the was in the array of categories. So return array of categories count. And then from there, from there do a title for row, picker view, title for row. So you, you set the title of each row. So we return array of categories, object that index, row. Whoops. So it returns the title of, of the object in the array of category. So if the row was zero, it's going to return the one. I mean, kind of confusing to talk about, but I think you can concept, conceptualize it. And then pick review. Um, then we choose did select row. I think this is the last thing that we need for, um, for the data, data source and delicate methods. And then, so here, when when we select a row, we can just say something on the label. Self my label set text, and this text will be array of categories object that index row. Okay. So now we're gonna say we're gonna in our label we're gonna show what row is selected. We have a couple more things to do, but um, for now, let's run it on the iPad simulator and see that the code works so far because we only have like uh like two things left to do that we haven't done which is like define um define these methods the done press and the cancel press like what happens so let's wait for the ipad simulator to come up and then see um, if the code works so far All right, here's our button. Press it. Okay, good. So I misspelled cancel a little thing here. Okay, so there's that. So I select one, two, three, four, six. Like so, whatever I select will 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 be there. All right, but now if I press done or cancel, it's gonna it's gonna crash for now because we haven't defined the method yet. So there, let me just crash my program on purpose. And then now we can define these two methods, um, the done press and the cancel press. Let me fix this too so that thing doesn't come up. Done press, okay. So now we do void uh, done press. So this is what we want to happen when the done button is pressed. So let's just say self my label set text done picking and then just do popover controller dismiss popover animated yes so it's gonna dismiss the popover so similar with the cancel press cancel press but I'm just gonna say popover controller dismiss popover animated yes Okay, I guess in the text I'm just gonna say self my label set text and cancel press. Alright, 
So there, that should um, that should do it. So run. Let's see. Okay. Button. One, two, three. Done. It's done picking. Or like cancel, cancel, press. Okay. Yep. So that's pretty much it. And now uh, let me show you a quick thing. I think um, Xcode already does this for you. But if you want to check if the popover controller is up, then like for example in a touches began method, touches began, you can do super touches began, and then you can check like this if um popover controller is popover visible so that means like right now you can see the popover then you can just say popover controller dismiss popover animated yes but i mean xcode already does this but if you want to if you have a secondary button for example and you have a button and you press it now it's going to be two popovers and then um apple doesn't really like that so if you try to submit it it might not it might not get approved so here's what you, what you gotta do. You just gotta check that if the popover is visible, then you dismiss it and you pop over the the new um, popover of what of the button with the other with the other um, popover. So that's pretty much how you do it. Let me show you a quick thing of the arrow direction any. So let's say if I move this to the top left. Kind of curious. I haven't done this before. Let's run the simulator, and let's see if it pops to the left or to the bottom. All right. So it popped the arrow any direction. Just changed it to that, and then it just popped it right there. So it still works. Done picking. Cancel press. All right. So that's the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time in the next tutorial. Bye.